All right, here we go. Welcome everyone, Uriel Kame here. Today we are talking about your health, fitness, and nutrition questions. Welcome to Ask Yuri Live. I'm gonna cue the cool intro here, ready? Here we go. Oh yeah, we got it synced up this time. Hope you guys are having an amazing day, amazing week. And uh, welcome, thank you for joining me again every Wednesday. 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. We are here on my Facebook fan page answering your questions, health, fitness, nutrition, whatever matters to you most, that's what I'm gonna answer for you here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna open up my uh, Facebook feed so I can see what you guys are posting if you've got any questions. And remember, we'll be going for 25 minutes. So we're gonna end this bad boy at 12.55 p.m. Eastern Time. And this is your opportunity to connect with me live, get your questions answered. So thank you for joining me. Just in case you don't know who I am, my name is Yuri L. Kame. I'm a New York Times bestselling author of whoa, this book, The All-Day Energy Diet and The All-Day Fat-Burning Diet. And I'm a uh, renowned holistic nutritionist and health expert who's helped over half a million people over the last 10 years improve their health, lose weight, get in great shape. And uh, I'm on a mission to help 10 million people by 2018, 100 million people by 2040. And I would love for you to be one of them and for you to join us on this awesome journey. So thanks for joining me and let's get started. So if you've got a question, type it into the comments here. And while you guys are doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to open up our archive of questions that uh, we get asked on, on a regular basis. Uh, we've got a, a big Google Doc that kind of keeps everything in one place. So, um, All right, so I've got a question here from Heidi, and we're gonna be talking about SIBO here. So she's got a question that um, I'm just gonna kind of abbreviate for you, and she says, I've recently been diagnosed with SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. I thought I remember hearing an interview with a specialist in this area on the Fat Loss Summit. Uh, can you remind me of what you guys were talking about and what the recommendation is? Okay, so I'm not a gut specialist when it comes to SIBO, but basically what you want to avoid is overdoing the probiotic use here because what happens is normally you know, the bacteria from for instance your probiotics should be getting into your large intestine right which is considered your gut with small bacterial overgrowth what happens is a lot of that bacteria is kind of pushed up into the small intestine where it's you know there's it's not really supposed to be so what ends up happening is you get this really kind of bloated feeling uh you, you, you your tummy feels a lot more distended than it should so these are a couple symptoms that you might have SIBO um, if that's the case, there's obviously a very specific dietary protocol that you want to follow, which um, I've got uh, some friends over at, oh my God, um, Specific Carbohydrate Diet, so scdlifestyle.com, uh, Jeremy and Jordan, um, sorry, Jordan and Steven, that's, I can't even think right now. So scdlifestyle.com, they've got some really good resources to help you kind of combat SIBO and kind of like rectify the issue there. Because when you do have SIBO, you, you kind of do really have to follow a bit more of a specific dietary protocol, restricting certain carbohydrates. You don't want to be overdoing the probiotics because if you're taking in more probiotics, you're simply going to be feeding more of that bacterial growth in the actual small intestine, okay? So that's kind of the extent of... Of, of what I can say to that, Heidi, but uh, I want to thank you for your question, and hopefully that helps you out. Okay, so um, let's see what's going on in the Facebook feed. Again, if you guys have a question, let me know in the comments area. And uh, just so you guys know, we actually have, uh, I've actually posted a link in the, uh, the description here. Um, so this book here, The All Day Energy Diet, we created a cookbook follow-up to this bad boy. And we actually printed several thousand copies physically, full color, it's beautiful. And I was just talking to our team uh, the other week. We actually have uh, a bunch more copies left in the warehouse and we're giving them away for free. If you just want to cover the shipping, that would be awesome. So if you go to the link uh, just above this video, the alldayenergydiet.com forward slash cookbook, that will take you over to the page. You can get the cookbook shipped right to your front door. And we just ask that you cover, for cover the shipping cost. And um, yeah, so I just want to let you know about that. Uh, 67 recipes, they're all allergen-free, low in sugar. They take less than 15 minutes to make and they taste awesome. Okay, now with that said, uh, Debbie, what's up Debbie? Is 100% rye bread good for type two, type two diabetes? Um, if you've got type two diabetes, I would recommend not eating bread on a consistent basis. It doesn't matter if it's whole wheat, rye, 
maybe sourdough is a little bit better because it's been fermented. Uh, but rye bread is just, you know, to be very honest, most ryes are still using a lot of the, uh, the white flours and so forth. So I wouldn't recommend it necessarily. Um, but if you are having it, just keep it to a minimum, okay? Debbie, how you doing, Debbie? I lift heavy and have a lot of muscle tone. However, I like to lose fat. Is it best to do more cardio or lower calories? Uh, both of those suggestions I would actually not recommend. Okay, doing more cardio is the biggest sin. I'm not gonna, uh, maybe not sin, but biggest mistake, especially when they make when they want to lose weight. You're on the right track, right? You're lifting heavy. Again, I don't know what your body looks like. I don't know your, your tendencies in terms of development. Um, but the key to losing fat and staying lean in the long run is not doing cardio. Cardio is like playing the casino, the slot machines, right? Lifting heavy is like investing your money intelligently. So when every time you lift heavy weights, you're, you're strengthening your muscles. And essentially what that's doing is that is going to be... Um, that's going to be strengthening those muscles and the more muscle you have the higher your metabolism is because mu muscle is much more metabolically active than fat is so you're on the right track um again there's different protocols and things you can do with respect to your workouts that are not going to bulk you up so you want to be lifting heavy low repetitions again anywhere from like three to eight repetitions is what you want to go for um cardio can be used but you want to be doing interval training right short bouts of high intensity so for instance, if you're on the treadmill, it might be sprinting for 10 seconds, recover for 30. Sprint for 10, recover for 30, and do that for 10 minutes and you'll be toast. You don't wanna be doing like an hour or so of cardio on a consistent basis. That's just not a good place to get into. Um, lowering your calories is something you wanna be very careful of because when you restrict your, your caloric intake, not only do you feel deprived and then rebel against that, but also your thyroid can start to suppress your metabolism because it says, hey, listen, we're not getting enough calories in, so we're not really sure when we're getting our next kind of fuel intake from, so we're gonna lower our metabolically active tissues so we can conserve more energy. It's a biological response that was like literally installed in our brain from the time we walked on this earth. So what you can do more intelligently is cycle your calories. I talk about this, this kind of the foundation of my all-day fat burning diet, which is the five-day food cycling formula. And just the, here's the little rhyme I like to use. Some days high, some days low, some days yes, some days no. So basically you think about cycling your calories, some days high, some days low. One day you may have no food, which is totally good. Um, and that's kind of as, you know, as abbreviated as I'll keep it. But the whole idea here is that you want to eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. If you're restricting your calories for too long, that's going to lead to some issues. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out. And um, yeah, there we go. Okay, so Debbie, how many days a week for HIT? So high intensity interval training. Uh, I'd recommend two to three at the most. Okay, because it's very hard on the body physically, but also psychologically. You have to get motivated to really do this. And if you're interested in this stuff, if you're doing uh, running, check out mytreadmilltrainer.com, which is me on your headphones guiding you step by step through your workouts. I tell you when to speed up, when to slow down. It takes all the motivation and thinking out of the workout, which makes it much more enjoyable. But I wouldn't recommend more than two to three days a week just because it is pretty taxing on the body. And you don't really need an hour, right? As I, as I said before, five, 10, 15, 20 minutes is pretty much all you need if you're doing it properly. Okay. Uh, Jessica, is it is it better to do lighter weights with higher reps or heavier weights with lower reps? I've started doing Les Mills body pump and was wondering if you'd recommend it. I don't recommend most cardio body pump classes just because you've got like a 10 pound bar on your shoulders and you're doing like 100 squats. It's not really applicable to real life, right? Like, you know, uh, you're much better. And again, there's, it's, it's better than doing nothing, right? But if you had to choose in terms of, okay, I have this amount of time to a lot to exercise, what should I do? Hey, you know, do the body pump stuff if you enjoy that, but don't make that the sole focus of your exercise program. What you want to be doing is heavy weights, low repetitions. Train to become stronger. And when you do that, again, you force your muscles to grow. And not in a way that's going to turn you into a bodybuilder, especially if you're lifting uh, heavy weights at lower repetitions. You're not in the, in the spectrum that leads to muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth. But you are training your, your nervous system, that neuromuscular uh, junction between the nervous system and your muscles to lift stronger, to lift heavier weights, and it's just more functional for everyday life, right? So strength is very important. 
Um, so never forget, especially as a woman, it's going to keep your bones healthier and it's, it's massively important for fat loss in the long run. Okay. You're welcome, Debbie. Uh, you rock as well. Okay, Disha, is it possible to lose 30 pounds in two months? Absolutely. If you're 600 pounds, you'll lose 30 pounds in a week. So it really depends on where you're at. So if you're somebody who's already close to your, let's say your set point, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging, right? So understand the more you lose, so initially the more unfit you are, the more overweight you are, the easier it is to get fitter, the easier it is to lose weight initially. As you get fitter, as you get more lean, there's a law of kind of like, there's a, a, a diminishing returns. You put in that much more work for a smaller gain. It's like the Olympic sprinters. They have to work for four years, right? For a long period of time to shave off like one one hundredth of a second. But when they first started sprinting, if they just, you know, never sprinted in their life before, a couple of training sessions, you know, maybe some technique adjustments may have shaven half a second off their 100 meter sprint time. So the closer you get towards your goal, the smaller the improvements are going to be. And just understand that, okay? So it really depends on where you are. Okay, Deepak, how you doing, buddy? All right, so is it true that working for an hour a day for a person with a desk job of eight to 10 hours sitting in front of a computer doesn't really matter? If so, what routine do you suggest? Will it be helpful if you give, um, it'll be helpful if you give your insights on this? Great question. Okay, so the workout does help, but it's not like the fix all, right? We live in a society where we think we can sit all day and then work out for 30 to 60 minutes and that's like, it's all good. So right now, as I'm recording this, I'm actually gonna show you guys this if I can. I'm gonna take this off and hopefully um, you can see this. All right, so this is a standing desk, right? Here I am standing. If you guys can see this, I don't even know. But anyways, what I would strongly recommend is if you can, hopefully that's set up properly there. If you can get a standing desk, even if you can't, just spend more time standing, like, like literally just stand and do your work because doing so, just the fact of standing, well, let me ask you this. If you're standing, are you gonna be activating more muscle than if you're sitting? Yes, right? If you're standing, are you sitting right on your tailbone? No. If you're standing, does your heart have to work harder to move blood from your feet to your head? Yes, right? So all three of those are big benefits to standing, right? Because we know that sitting is a very, very uh, bad thing from a posture perspective, right? We slouch and it leads to all sorts of low back issues, posture problems. But if you can stand, just the fact that you're standing gets your body a little bit more active, right? And then instead of just standing, you can move around, you can come up on your toes, you can do all sorts of stuff, right? So it's really important. So I would say think about working out less, but moving more. And part of that movement is spending more time standing, okay? So the workouts are important, but they're not going to be the band-aid solution for sitting all day. Cool? Great question. All right, Dio. Hey, Yuri, what is a better protein to take? Soy or whey protein? Is there an advantage or disadvantage between the two? Which would you recommend? Great question, and I would recommend neither one. I'm going to actually give you a link. If I can post a link in here, if I can, I'm going to just post a link for you guys who are interested in protein to check out this report. It's called The Protein Lie. And I wrote this because so many people had questions about protein. So which one do you recommend? How much should I be taking? When should I be taking it? Do I need to have that after a workout? All this stuff. Okay, so the most common questions, like I guarantee if you've got a question about protein, it's answered in that report. So to answer your question, Dio, um, I'm not a huge fan of either whey or soy. Soy is problematic. Um, just It's an allergenic type of food. Whey, a lot of people have issues with it. What I like is pea protein. Pea protein has the exact same, more or less, exact same amino acid profile as whey protein, and it's hypoallergenic, which means that it doesn't, it doesn't activate your immune system into kind of like a crazy response when you consume it. Plus, it has a very high source of branched chain amino acids, which are commonly used for guys, you know, looking to bulk up or just building muscle. Uh, so if you're active and working out, those branched chain amino acids are pretty important. Um, yeah, it's, and not all pea proteins taste, you know, that good. But we developed one called Pure Plant Protein, uh, which we're currently out of stock in, but it's basically a chocolate flavored pea protein, uh, which again has about 20 grams of protein per one scoop. And that's 
terrific and there's no other junk in there. So even though you can't get that right now, I'd recommend looking for um, a pea protein or some kind of combination of plant protein. And you can look at like a hemp seed protein with a brown rice protein as well. Uh, those are some good combinations, but pea protein is the highest source uh, or the best source of protein in the plant kingdom when it comes to protein powders. Cool. I hope that helps you out. Nice, Donna. You enjoy the pea protein? Do you, Okay, let me know. Do you find that it tastes like a chocolate milkshake? And the good news is that we've actually tweaked the formula a little bit to make it taste even better. So we're going to be coming out with a new formula, who knows when, in a couple months. But it's even better than the initial one. So if you enjoy that one, that's awesome. Mathieu, what is your opinion on colon hydrotherapy? I've actually never done it. Um, if it's done properly, there could be some benefit. I think there could be some benefit to kind of move in some junk in there. Uh, if you do it, make sure it's done with obviously a, a trained professional. Uh, Deepak, if not taking any kind of protein, can we directly take BCAA supplements? Yeah, you can for sure. Um, but again, they're not, I, there's, I don't know if it's worth, you, you're better off investing in a protein, I believe, that has good BCAAs than just taking BCAAs by themselves. Because you might as well get the protein at the same time. And um, otherwise, you know, unless you want to spend all sorts, of, all sorts of money on supplements, I don't know if it's necessarily necessary. Okay, Ida. Um, hey, do you read any info on body stiffness? Can't find anything. I even stretch a lot after exercising. So um, there could be some adrenal issues here, Ida. So when you have like adrenal fatigue, for instance, our body tends to get very stiff and sore. Uh, lately, I've been experiencing some stiffness as well. And I don't know if it's like the amount of like tennis I've been playing over the summer, um, like I don't really go out for a run anymore, um, even though I didn't really do that much anyways, just because that might, it hurts my body. So when I'm playing tennis now, I can really feel it afterwards. And I was just um, in Utah at a friend's place this past weekend, and we did some really cool tire flipping. So these big tractor tires, we're flipping them over, and it was awesome. But I definitely felt it afterwards. Um, so other than like an ice bath, massage, you can try some magnesium supplements. Um, stretching is not going to help with the stiffness. You may want to look at some foam rolling, which might have a better impact. Uh, but you also may want to consider the adrenal component as well. So the other thing that I found is that if your diet is highly alkaline, if you're getting a lot of greens into your diet, a lot of that stiffness goes away. It doesn't really occur to the same degree. And that's one of the, one of the interesting trends that we found with a lot of our Total Wellness Cleanse clients is that they talk about how just cleaning up their diet reduces a lot of the stiffness they once had. So reducing inflammation in your diet uh, in terms of eating less inflammatory foods like the dairies and the glutens and so forth and really getting more plant-based foods into your body can make a big difference um, from an inflammation standpoint and that's how you feel stiffness or, or not stiff. So hopefully that helps you out. Okay, Mate, what's your opinion about the following? Probiotics causing constipation? I experienced it with three different probiotics. Um, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter what I think. If it happens to you, that's all that matters, right? So when you're thinking, when we're talking about constipation and bowel movements, there's three, a component, three components you want to think about. First is water. Okay, so hydration. You have to make sure, think about a water slide for a second. Okay, let's just use the example of a water slide. So the water slide itself is your intestine, your, your digestive system. Now, the water needs to go down the water slide in order to provide some flow, right? So you need water. Second is fiber. So fiber on the water slide, for instance, is like this little, um, that little rubber mat that you go on and it kind of helps you slide down. So think about that as the fiber. The fiber is going to bind to stuff and move it through. Number three is lubrication. So lubrication comes in the form of essential fatty acids, specifically things like fish oil, algae oil, any of the oils, olive oil, all that stuff, okay? So the lubrication is gonna make the slide even slipperier to help everything move through. So water, fiber, lubrication. So I would say that if you're stuck, the ratio of let's say fiber to water and lubrication is probably off. So you want more water coming in and probably some more essential fatty acids to help some stuff move through. So try that as you're taking the probiotics, and if that makes a difference, that's cool. If not, maybe take some time off those probiotics and see if there's a difference. Awesome. Okay. 
Uh, Lisa, two years post-op ACL reconstruction, felt 90% good. All of a sudden, a week ago, took a nosedive, had a bent, hard to bend or straighten. Everything aches. Thoughts? Uh, I don't know. Um, that seems like a question that a physiotherapist would really take care of. The only thing I can think of is that you just want to, again, it's not necessarily a joint issue um, in terms of like the cartilage, uh, but it's more of the, obviously the ligament here. Um, generally, with, with when we're talking about joints, mobility and lubrication is really important. So just keep moving, move your legs, move your knees, do some body weight squats, just kind of throughout the day, move, make sure you're going through the full range of motion, bending, extending, going to a deep squat, standing, taking the stairs, all those little movements and see if that helps just by lubricating and warming up that joint. Um, other than that, you'd probably have to talk to your doctor or physio for, for specific stuff on that. So, yeah, hopefully it helps out. Cool. All right, uh, let's see here. We've got a couple minutes left. I'm just going to grab a little sip of my coffee. That's right, I'm drinking coffee today. The little caveat here, this is decaf, okay? So I'm going to have a sip, and then I'll, I'll tell you something cool. All right, so do any of you guys use a Nespresso machine? The Nespresso machine is freaking amazing. Talk about making, I talk about it all the time, when you want to do something um, like reduce the barrier to entry, reduce the friction between what you want to do and the outcome. So if I wanted to make a coffee before, I'd have to take the beans out and grind them, put them in the espresso machine, make the espresso, heat up the milk, and that would take me 10 minutes, okay? Not the end of the world, but it's not the easy button that the Nespresso is. The Nespresso, I'm not, overly impressed with a lot of things that come out of the market uh, when it comes to like kitchen stuff but i would say this is probably the single this the single best invention when it comes to like easy button for coffee um, as it comes to coffee prep i mean I, I made this coffee this latte in the space of like here's what i did i took the pot out i put it in the machine i pressed the button and i walked away and it's done so in your life, this is a great analogy, think about whatever you want to do, how can you make it as simple as possible where there is little to no friction between what you want to do. If you want to eat healthier, make sure that healthy food is super accessible. If it's packed away somewhere deep in your fridge, you're not going to find it. If you've got cookies on your counter, guess what you're going to eat? The cookies. So make the bad stuff super hard to access, like going to the store and buying them, and make the healthy stuff convenient, accessible, and ready to go, right? Cut up your veggies ahead of time, have a meal plan in place so you don't have to think about anything, and that's as close as you can get with actually having somebody make the meals for you to the Nespresso-like easy button. So I just thought I would share that. All right, um, so, okay, Rim, I work out daily and try to balance my diet, but I keep getting craving chocolate and sugars. How can I stop the cravings? That's a good question, actually, because we've just put together a whole new video series just specifically for that topic. So if you're a fan of my page, you're going to see some Facebook ads in the next week and from there on out on this new cool blueprint that we've created called the Craving Cure. So I would suggest that you just watch your news feed for those ads. They'll probably start next week and they'll be directing you to a really cool PDF which is kind of like our quick start guide, and then a three video mini class, which is gonna show you exactly why cravings occur, how to get rid of them, and uh, specifically we use this thing called the CRM method, which is kind of my proprietary way of overcoming cravings. So without leaving you hanging for too long, I'll just give you a quick suggestion here. You crave what's in your blood, okay? So really simply, if you're craving chocolate and sugar, then the reality is you probably consume that more often than you should. So I know it's tough initially, but you want to kind of move some of those foods out and replace them with better food choices, okay? So that's one simple step you can make in the right direction. Uh, Charlotte, are linseeds and flax seeds the same? Uh, I think so, but you know what? Just do a quick Google search. Google's great for that stuff, okay? <laughs> that should give you the answer. Uh, I believe they're the same though. Don't quote me on that, but I think they are. All right, so Deesha, a little follow-up question. Thanks for a quick reply. One of your YouTube videos, I heard that walking on incline, we can do that with my current weight is 185 and want to lose 20 to 30 pounds in two to three months. 
something very important is coming from you. Cool. Yeah, walking on an incline. If you're walking on an incline, throw some extra weight on there, a weighted vest, a knapsack. The fact that you're moving vertically means you're working against gravity. And that just makes it so much more enjoyable and challenging. So you're not walking forever. You're walking for 15, 20 minutes, but you're drenched in sweat, huffing and puffing, because now you're carrying extra weight in a percentage of your movement against gravity, which is gonna be massively beneficial for you. So yeah, there it is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's that time. We have arrived at 12.55. I wanna thank you so much for taking the time. You guys enjoying this? If you're enjoying these FA, these live hangouts, maybe I'll do a few more of them impromptu throughout the week. Uh, if you're enjoying them, just like say yes, thumbs up. And actually, if you're enjoying this, if you found this helpful, click the little thumbs up button or share this actually with a friend on Facebook. If we can get like a hundred shares of this video, this specific Ask Yuri Live video, then I'll probably do more throughout the week. So if you can share these, then I'll do more of them because it's basically saying, hey, this is really valuable. If there's no shares, then I probably won't do many of them. Um, but just, yeah, if you find them valuable, share it with your friends. And I wanna thank you guys so much for taking the time to join me today. Once again, uh, get the free cookbook, alldayenergydiet.com forward slash cookbook. I just cover the shipping cost. It's awesome. You're going to love the cookbook. It's so good. And I will see you guys next week at the same time, 1230 p.m. Eastern, right here on the fan page. And if you want to watch the replay, head over onto YouTube. Just type in Uriel Kame and you'll find it. And there it is. So um, I'm going to use my, my nifty ninja tech skills and we're going to switch out to our little outro. And I'll bid you guys farewell.